Control A, delete, this works really well. And then Control V, paste. So there's my data. It did have a title, a header row, so I'm gonna leave this box that says header row. And there's my data. So there's my original sample data. I can see that the sample difference uh, when they did Canyon Country minus Valencia was negative 1.05. So that's the sample mean difference right there. So that's important. Remember, using randomized simulation, you don't really using the test statistic. You're actually just going to use the sample data itself. So the sample data is summarized by this difference right here, negative 1.05. All right, so here's the null hypothesis that the mu1 equals mu2. I'm going to simulate that. So they're going to create samples under the premise that the two populations really are equal. All right, now we were doing a two-tail test, so I'm going to click two-tail. Now we were doing 5% in two tails, which means it's broken up into 0.025. Okay, so again, we see here that... Um, we, get, we see here that uh, we have two tails. Now, if your sample data, your original sample data, falls in either of these two tails, it would be considered significant. So it would be considered a significant disagreement with the null hypothesis. So where is negative 1.05? Well, this tail starts at negative 1.014. So we barely made it. It's just this hair to the left of my... Uh, left right in my left tail, but it is in the red. It is in the left tail. Negative 1.05 is to the left of negative 1.01. So we are significant. But remember, this is not p-value. This is the significance level broken up into two tails. So if I want to get the p-value, I got to get the probability of this original sample data happening. All right, so let's do that. So when I'm in my date, my sample data was negative 1.05. I'm going to put it in one of these two boxes down here. Since it's negative, I'm going to put it in the left box, in the left tail. The right tail will automatically adjust. So I'm just going to type in negative 1.05 because that was the sample mean difference. Okay, I did that. And there we go. Okay, so now... This, if this was a left-tailed test, this 0 0.02 would be the p-value, but this is a two-tailed test. So what we said was we add the tails, right? We add the tails, or in the old days, we would multiply the tail percentage times two. So 0 0.020 plus 0 0.020 gives me a p-value of about 0 0.04, which is lower than our 5% significance level. So you can kind of see we can get the p-value and judge significance from the randomized simulation. All right. Now, what if I had match pair data? So that's always the question. What if I had match pair data? So let's let's work on match pair data here. Um, so I got the match pair data. This was a random sample of 80 adults, and we have their diastolic and systolic blood pressure, and we we also have the difference between them. So we talked about this in confidence intervals. How uh, in two population for match pair. Um, two population mean match pair, we subtract the differences. So we, instead of calculating the mean of diastolic and the mean of systolic, we subtract the individual numbers and get this column right here of differences. And then what we do is sort of a one population hypothesis test on the differences. So that's kind of how this works. So you can use the differences or you can use the two, the two, um, the diastolic and systolic blood pressure here. All right, so if I open this in Stat Cato, it's already in. I'm going to go to Statistics, um, uh, Hypothesis Test. Now I'm going to go Matched Pair, Matched Pair. There's Matched Pair right there. And now I have, I have my samples in columns, so I'm going to go my diastolic is Group 1 and my systolic is Group 2. I'm going to claim that they're less. I, most people know diastolic is quite a bit less than systolic, but this would be a good way to prove it. So we go to uh, not um, alternative hypothesis, and I'm going to click less than, make this a true left tail test. And again, I'm going to keep the significance level at 0 0.05. Okay, actually, let's, let's do a different one. Let's do, uh, let's do 0 0.01. 
It's always good to just in case we sometimes scientists have to move to a 1% significance level. Remember that's tied to type 1 and type 2 errors that we discussed before. So that could happen. Remember where it says hypothesized mean, you see the zero there. Remember the rule of the day, don't mess with the zero. Right? Keep the zero there. If the difference really is zero, then the two are equal, and that's our null hypothesis. Okay, so let's just go ahead and push OK, and we'll see what we get. There we go. All right, there's all our numbers. We can see the p-value is off the charts close to zero. It's in scientific notation, 10 to the negative 54th power. That's basically zero. Most computer programs would just call that zero. Test statistic, negative 39. That's off the charts for a t-test statistic. That means the sample mean for diastolic is way, way 39 standard errors below uh, systolic. Very, very significant. Definitely in the left tail determined by the critical value. But remember, this works like a one population hypothesis test. In fact, if you just went to statistics, hypothesis test, one population mean, and then just did a, uh, a one population mean test of the differences, you could actually do the same, get the same numbers. Uh, match pair works a lot like a one population test. So I'm going to click less than, hypothesized mean, I'm going to go ahead and put in zero because I'm getting measuring the differences. And notice, again, I would, I would get, uh, let's see, what did I do? Well, it looks like I put something in backwards here. Let's take a look. Oh, I clicked on the wrong button. Okay, let's try that again. I did, I clicked on the wrong, see it says diastolic blood pressure. It's supposed to say differences there. So let's try that again. I don't want that one. That one looks all messed up. Let's look at uh, statistics, hypothesis test, one population mean. And again, I wanted the differences, column three. There we go. Now we got it. Sometimes you click on something and not what you expect pops up. That usually means you clicked on the wrong data set. All right, there we go. Now we're getting the same exact numbers as we did with the match pair test. Now, if I want to use this data to do a randomized simulation, I do have to use the differences. So again, we're going to use the differences this time to do the simulation. So in simulation, uh, with stat key, you do if you're doing match pair, you do have to approach it as a one population mean simulation of the differences. So you need this difference column. All right, so I would go to stat key one uh, randomized hypothesis test test for single mean. There we go. Um, again, do the null hypothesis as mu d equals zero. So type in zero there. Um, uh, for the null hypothesis, because we're looking at the, the difference being zero. And um, now um, I'm going to go ahead and I need to upload this data, so let's go edit data, control A, and put that data in there. I have no identifier, no word next to every number, so leave that unchecked, but it does have a title. There we go. That looks good, and we're ready to go. So we're simulating zero, that the difference is zero. Remember that was what, um, uh, uh, that would be the null hypothesis, mu d equals zero, while mu d is less than zero would be my alternative since I'm trying to see that, prove that diastolic is lower than systolic. So if I generate a bunch of thousands of these, there we go, I'm gonna click left tail, now, where would the tail start? Well, if I'm using a 1% significance level, I would type in 0 .01 in the tail, which is right there. So my tail is, starts at negative 2.669. So anything lower than negative 2.669 is going to be significant. If you look at our original sample difference, it's negative 44 is our sample mean. So that's definitely way off the charts in the tail. So this is way out in the left tail, definitely significant. Now this is not the p-value, remember 0 0.01 is the significance level. So to get the p-value, I'm going to put the original sample data in this bottom box. So negative 44.525. That's my original sample difference 
from the systolic and diastolic. You can kind of see that it had to scale it because it's so far in the left tail. But this would be my p-value. I've got a p-value of zero. All right. So that's, that is our lesson for today on using um, Statcato and StatKey to calculate two population mean hypothesis tests. All right, have a great day and I will see you next time.